People are talking about business software. They're talking about it here. They're talking about it here. Are you ready for these conversations? This is Conversational ERP. The goal of our course is to give you the professional vocabulary that you need to participate in and contribute to these business conversations. Let's begin. Lesson 1. What is ERP? In the spirit of not taking yourselves too seriously, let's start with a quiz. If I asked you, what is ERP, would you say, A. It's an acronym, like LOL or WTF. B. It's a really, really big piece of software. C. It's too complicated for one person to understand. Or D. All of the above. And the answer is A or B. Yes, it's an acronym, and yes, it's a really big piece of software, but I refuse to let you believe that it's too complicated for you to understand. So if you said C or D, I think you're wrong, and I'm going to try to change your mind as we move through the lessons of this course. Yes, ERP is big and sometimes complicated, and yes, it can support lots of different business processes, from sales to procurement to manufacturing to finance, and many, many, many more. And yes, there's a very large number of configurations of the various steps of each of these processes, and yes, there's a lot of different ways of combining all these processes together in a business. But that doesn't mean you still can't have a core understanding of how everything generally fits together. It's like a forest. You can still see and appreciate a forest without having to inspect every single branch on every single tree. Now, if you want a simple answer to the question, what is ERP?, here you go. ERP is a system that optimizes the flow of information, materials, and cash in an organization. That's just 16 words. That's pretty simple, right? No matter how sophisticated or complicated the individual business processes inside an ERP system get, they always come back to this definition. Everything an ERP does in sales, procurement, manufacturing, finance, or whatever, Everything an ERP does, it does to optimize the flow of information, materials, and cash. We are going to talk about the business processes inside an ERP system in this course, but I have good news. If you have any knowledge of business, any at all, you probably already know a lot about how an ERP system works. Because an ERP system is just a model of a business. If a business performs a particular task, then the ERP system can provide an app to support that task. We generally don't make business apps unless they do something that people actually need. So, the study of ERP is the study of business. I'll show you what I mean because I'm going to draw an entire business and an entire ERP system on one single slide. Here's a business. Let's call it your business. Let's give you a CEO level view of what's happening inside your business. On the right, we have your customers. On the left, your suppliers. In the middle, in your business, you buy stuff from your suppliers, add value to it in some way, and then sell it to your customers. So let's look at the major business processes necessary to make that happen. Let's start on the customer side, and let's start simple. What's the one thing you want from your customers? You want an order. You want to capture your customers' orders in a sales order document. And once you get that order, you obviously want to ship it to your customer, and then you obviously want to send them an invoice, and then you obviously want to get paid. And maybe your process starts with a sales quotation before you get the order. Let's add in some arrows to show what's going where, and voila, you have an illustration of one of the major processes in business, the order to cash process. And you already understand this because you've done this a million times in your life, either at work or at home. So far, so good. More good news. If you understand order to cash, you already automatically understand another major business process, procure to pay. Procure to pay is just a mirror image of order to cash. Let's draw. Because you're buying instead of selling, you issue a purchase order instead of a sales order. Once you send that order, you expect to receive what you bought, expect to get an invoice for what you bought, and then you expect to pay for what you bought. And just like your customers on the customer side, sometimes you ask for quotations before you issue a purchase order. There's one other way for a purchase order to arise. Some businesses allow their people to create purchase requisitions. Let's add the arrows, and there's the procure-to-pay process. 
Your business will keep records of important master data as well, such as customers, products, and pricing, and suppliers, materials, and purchase pricing. So, how do these two major processes connect? Well, in two ways. One, via the inventory that you keep in your business. When you receive something from a supplier, you put it into inventory. When you ship it to a customer, you take it out of inventory. Two, via finance. Your company will keep its financial records in what is traditionally called a general ledger. This is an old term arising from the actual ledger book into which accountants actually used to handwrite financial entries. In your business, the general ledger is used for both financial accounting and management accounting. When you think of financial accounting, think of the financial statements that you get every month, the profit and loss, the balance sheet, cash flow, and so on, and think of meeting regulatory requirements like filing your taxes. When you think of management accounting, think more of the metrics and KPIs that you use to manage the performance of your business. As you might expect, whenever you buy or sell something, you generate financial records that wind up in the general ledger. Most parts of your business feed information into the general ledger eventually. There are also specialized areas in finance. For example, accounts receivable, which manages the important task of sending invoices to customers and getting paid. There is a mirror image area on the procurement side called accounts payable, which accepts supplier invoices and pays them. And, as we've noted, these and other areas in your business feed the financial aspects of all of your activities into your general ledger. And with that, in just these few minutes, you have a simple diagram of the major transactional processes of a distribution business. And by the way, a diagram of an ERP system for distributors. Now that's a good start, but what if your business did more than just buy and sell? What if your business was also a manufacturing business? What else would we have to add to the ERP system to support you? Well, we've got sales orders for selling and purchase orders for purchasing, so it only makes sense that we'd have production orders for producing. If you have a manufacturing plant in your business, then you use a production order to tell your plant employees what to make and when to make it. By the way, some people call production orders work orders, but they're the same thing. The plant will take those production orders and execute them in order to manufacture your products. But they can't manufacture anything out of thin air, so they'll have to start by taking the materials they need out of inventory. This is called a material issue because the materials are issued from inventory to the production order. When they're done adding value to the production execution process, your people will put the finished goods back into inventory. This is called a finished goods receipt to differentiate it from a material receipt you might get from a supplier. Just like in sales and procurement, your production team will keep records of important master data. The most important records are the bill of material and the routing, which tell the plant everything they need to know to produce a given finished product. In its simplest terms, manufacturing is like baking a cake. You need to know the ingredients and you need to know the instructions. The bill of materials is just a list of materials that you need to make a finished good, exactly like the ingredients list. The routing is the sequence of steps that you perform to transform the materials into the finished product, exactly like the instructions. Virtually every manufacturing company in the world, no matter if they're making soup or airplanes or almost anything in between, everyone uses these two simple records to set up and run their production process. So now we have everything we need to run a manufacturing business. Or do we? Let's imagine you're running a manufacturing business. Here's what we need to do. We have to figure out which products to make, specifically how many of each, and when to have them ready in inventory so we can ship them to our customers. Then we have to figure out which materials we need to make these products, specifically how many of each, where we have to buy them from, and when to have them all ready in inventory so we can issue them to production. This gets a little tricky because each finished product could have dozens of parts, each of which probably has a different supplier and a different lead time. But all of these materials have to be in inventory before we can start production, or we won't be able to make our product. All we have to do is figure out the production orders to give to the plant 
taking into account all the demand from our customers, all the supply from existing production orders and existing purchase orders, and all existing inventory of materials, work in progress, and finished goods, while spending the minimum amount of our limited cash. Let's take a moment and do a quiz. If I asked you, how should we figure this out, would you say, A, with a pencil, a calculator, and a whole lot of coffee? B, with an Excel spreadsheet? C, my head hurts already at the thought of this? Or D, we could let the ERP system figure it out for us? And the answer is D. Yes, absolutely, we should let the ERP system figure this out for us. The heart, or more accurately, the brain of any business, is in its planning system. Every ERP system provides some kind of planning capability. It's right in the name, Enterprise Resource Planning. ERP grew out of, and still uses, an older planning capability called MRP, Material Requirements Planning, later known as Manufacturing Resource Planning. For now, we're just going to call it planning. So how does planning work? The planning system looks at all demands from customers, and sometimes the forecasts from the sales department as well, to figure out the total demand for each of our products on a daily basis, from today until several weeks into the future. Then it will look at each product's bill of materials to see what materials are required, and then it will check how much inventory we have. If we don't have enough finished goods to meet demand, and if we don't have enough materials to make those finished goods, then the planning system springs into action. The planning system knows where we buy each material, how much we pay, and how long it takes to arrive. So it can automatically raise a requisition, or even a purchase order, to bring in materials to meet our requirements. The planning system also knows when each customer wants each product they've ordered so it can automatically raise a production order to tell the plants to manufacture all the finished goods we need to meet our customers' requirements. In simplest terms, the planning system will optimize your purchases and your production so that you don't have to figure it out by yourself. An ERP system can do this far more efficiently than you could ever manually do by yourself. That is the real genius of an ERP system. ERP does a lot more than just help you keep records of everything you do. ERP actively helps you manage your two biggest costs, purchasing and production, while spending the least possible amount of your limited cash. By the way, the manufacturing process we've been discussing is sometimes called plan to produce. And collectively, you're looking at the major processes of a core ERP system, and all on one slide, as promised. Let's circle back for a moment. We said that ERP is a system that optimizes the flow of information, materials, and cash in an organization. So where do we see these things on our diagram? If you look at the top third of a diagram, you'll see orders. Sales orders, production orders, and purchase orders. An order is simply information, or as some people call it, a demand signal. Demand signal information flows upstream, from customers to your business to suppliers and ERP systems are designed to optimize the flow of that information. If you look at the middle third of a diagram, you'll see materials, inventory being bought, manufactured, and sold. Materials flow downstream, from suppliers to your business to customers, and ERP systems are designed to optimize the flow of these materials. Finally, if you look at the bottom third of a diagram, you'll see cash, invoices and payments flowing into and out of your business, with records of everything flowing into the general ledger. Cash flows upstream, from customers to your business to suppliers. And again, ERP systems are designed to optimize the flow of cash. In summary, the next time that someone asks you, what is ERP, you can draw it out for them on one single page, and you can give them one simple answer. ERP is a system that optimizes the flow of information, materials, and cash in an organization. Thanks very much for watching. This concludes Lesson 1.